Here we go. And I'm going to give you a bit of information about who Etta is. Now, in case you didn't guess, someone who writes books probably loves to read books too. And according to Edo's biography, she is a huge book eater. She doesn't actually eat them, but she reads them vivaciously. She likes to read books from a given author. If she finds an author that she likes, she likes to find all the books that person has ever written and read them all. Um, she didn't really like to do, what did she did not like to do as a kid? I bet you could guess what she might not have liked to do. If she likes to read, she probably didn't like, starts with M, ends in F. <laughs> she wasn't a big math person, um, but she does like board games and nifty number puzzles, which is kind of cool. Um, she's always dreamed of living near a forest with her very own stream running through it. Who else wouldn't like that? And she liked to learn new languages when she was a kid. Maybe that's why she became an author because she likes to share words in amazing patterns in beautiful stories with her young readers. Um, when she wanted to, what, what she wanted to be in when she grew up was not actually an author. She wanted to be a foreign correspondent, which is also a very cool career to do. And her favorite book as a kid well she doesn't have one because she just loves reading so many different authors and different kinds of books but she couldn't pick just one um she likes to eat lots of foods she particularly likes wild blueberries from north ontario who doesn't love blueberries and she really likes to garden and write books for kids so without further ado, I'm going to turn you over to Etta. We're really, really super excited to have her here. Thank you so, so much for doing this this morning. Um, I'm going to share my screen so you can see Etta's amazing book, and she's going to read to you. Okay, Etta, anything you want to tell us before we start the screen share? Um, there was a, a, a girl, I think, that wanted admittance, I noticed. I her. Okay, so... I just want to know the names of the children that are, are, are looking uh, or viewing this. So. Okay, so let me, un everybody, you can unmute yourselves. The Felberg, uh, the, uh, are Aubrey and who? Jacob. Aubrey and Jacob, and which one is which? Uh, uh, I'm Jacob and that's well. Okay. <laughs> okay. And, who, and who just joined us? The girl, there, I think there was a girl's name that popped up. Lexi? Then, yes, Lexi. We've got two girls yes, in the box. Who do we okay, have? Who? Oh, answer. Answer. Sorry. Answer now. Mom can help you. Yeah. They're talking I to you. I can't see. What's your name? Which, tell them your name. Tell them your name. My name's Jacqueline. 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 All right. Jacqueline. Partner in crime. Go. Too shy. Okay. So, Mama, can you say the name? Lexi and Jacqueline. Leslie. Lexi. Lexi. And I see Joshua. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Joshua. Hi. You got enormous, by the way, Josh. What are they feeding you? All right. So is that everybody? Yep. And Chip okay. and Booby Telner and Booby Felton. All right, great. Okay, so let's start. I'm really, really happy to see all of you this morning, this Sunday, bright Sunday morning. And I'm going to share a book with you that I have written called Do Frogs Drink Hot Chocolate? And it has a subtitle, and the subtitle is How Animals Keep Warm. Sigal, can you get, there we go, How Animals Keep Warm. All right. So before we start, I want to ask you a question. How do you keep warm? What do you do to keep warm? And if you want to tell me, and I want to hear, just put your hand up and wave. Joshua, how do you keep warm? What do you do? Uh, I put on a sweater or jacket or we change the heat. All right, so you turn up the heat or you put on a sweater or jacket. What about Leslie? How do you keep warm? 
or Jacqueline? Ah, uh, I could go in the tub with my siblings. You go in the a hot tub, did you say? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you can say it again. Uh, I, I could go in a tent with my siblings. In a tent. She slept in a tent with all oh, of her siblings last in night. In a tent to keep warm, right. That's a good idea. All right. What about Jacob and Aubrey? How do, what do you do to keep warm? Uh, my castle. I sometimes go somewhere warm. <laughs> like do you travel to another uh, country or, to keep warm? You got to keep warm. What country? South Africa. <laughs> Good idea. Awesome. All right. So all the ideas that you just gave are called adaptations. Adaptations is what you do to make yourself warm. And animals have adaptations too. So we're going to read all about how animals have adaptations to keep warm. And you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to shout out yes or no, because this book is full of questions. And you don't have to put up your hand. You just shout it out, OK? I'll do the first one to show you how it works. You go. All right. Now, my. my um, when it gets cold outside, do animals turn up the heat? Now I'm gonna answer this yeah. one. I'm gonna answer this one. So, no. So how do they survive the chilly weather? Let's find out. Okay, the next one is your turn. Do frogs drink hot chocolate to keep warm? Shout no. out. No. 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 Let's no. find out. No. Some frogs don't even try to keep warm. The Alaskan wood frog turns into a frogsicle. It spends the winter with most of its body frozen. When the air warms up, the frog warms up too. The frog's going to water. The frog's going to water. Do penguins snuggle with a friend? Shout it out. Yes. 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 In winter, yeah. thousands of emperor penguins come together in a giant huddle. It's warm in the middle, but cold on the outside. So what do they do? The penguin shuffle. Taking small steps, they slowly change places. That way, they all get a turn in the middle. Next. Do butterflies sunbathe to keep warm? Shout it out. No. No. Yes. I say yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Butterflies can fly, can, cannot fly if they are cold, and they can't make their own heat. So what do they do? They catch some rays. If it's cold, a butterfly will sit on a rock or a log and stretch its wings. Then the sun warms up its light muscles. That's cool. Huh? Next. Do foxes wear earmuffs to keep warm? Shout it out. No. 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 Arctic foxes have so warm for yeah, ears. The yeah. fur helps. So does the size. Ears stick out <laughs> into the cold air. A fox's body can lose heat that way. Smaller ears don't stick out as much as big ears, so they lose less heat. Let's see the next animal. Do turtles jump up and down to keep warm? No. <laughs> no. 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 
No. Many turtles burrow into the mud and leaves at the bottom of a pond. The water there is cold, but it never freezes. It usually stays at about 39 degrees Fahrenheit or 3.8 Celsius. That's the perfect temperature for turtles who like to snooze while they wait for spring. Do polar bears build homes to keep warm? No. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. No. Yes. yes. Pregnant polar bears build dens. A mama polar bear uses her sharp claws to dig out a cave in the snow. When it's finished, she crawls inside to have her babies. The den keeps them all safe and warm until spring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do whales wear snowsuits to keep warm? No. 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 Whales have blubber under their skin. This layer of fat keeps their body heat in and the cold out. Whale blubber can be up to 30 centimeters thick. That's about this much of whale blubber. It also stores energy. So whales can keep going for a long time without eating. Mm -hmm. Do squirrels curl up under blankets to keep warm? No. <laughs> no. Yes. No. Yes. Sort of. Squirrels have built-in blankets. They wrap their long, bushy tails around themselves so their body heat won't escape. And less blood flows into their tails. So instead, it stays in their bodies to help yes. them keep warm. Cool. Do monkeys take hot baths to keep warm? No. <laughs> That's a silly question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It's a no. Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> I guess Japanese <laughs> <they're not. laughs> This is a special kind of monkey that likes to take warm baths. Oh. They live in Japan where there are hot water bubbles that come up from the ground to form pools. And after they play in the snow, the macaques jump into these hot pools to warm up. Yeah. That's so crazy. Huh. Do tuatera sit by a campfire to keep warm? A tuatera no. is a kind of lizard. No. 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 no way. No, they can't. No way. <laughs> no way. No way, Jose. Yeah. No. Yeah, that's a nice thing. What Tara's bodies can't make heat, but birds' bodies can. So, what does a Tara to a Tara do? It has a sleepover with a little bird called a fairy prion. The heat from the bird helps keep the tuatera from getting too chilly overnight. Looks messy. Do honeybees keep, use teamwork to keep warm? Yeah. Yes. 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 In the winter, yeah. honeybees form a cluster around the queen bee. Then they shiver together. By vibrating their wing muscles, they raise the air temperature in the hive. This keeps the queen oh, yeah. warm. How do bees have energy for all the shivering? They eat honey. Mm. Yeah. Do birds fly south to keep warm? No. Yes. 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 And no. Yes. Some birds fly yes. south, but other birds fly as survive by eating as much as possible. 
This gives their bodies energy to keep warm. Feathers help too. When they get fluffed up, they trap warm air next to the bird's skin. Do guanacos wear leg warmers to keep warm? A guanaco is a kind of llama. It's a llama. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sort of. Guanacos have thick woolly coats, but there is very little fur on their legs. When it's cold outside, chili guanacos lie down with their legs tucked under their bodies. That keeps them nice and warm. So all of these animals have special ways to keep warm. But what about you? What do you do to keep warm? And we've already <laughs> talked about that. Well, we go in snow suits. So yeah. Okay, so now it's my turn to talk. We put on scarves. So, so all of these animals have special adaptations to keep them warm. Now you're going to make up your crazy animal. <laughs> and your animal is going to have two or three adaptations. So just before you make your own animal, let's look at, we're going to review to remind ourselves what the adaptations are. So your animal might freeze like the Alaskan wood frog or you might want your animal to huddle together with other animals like penguins or you might want your animal to sunbathe like butterflies or you might want your animal to have short furry ears like the arctic fox or you might want your animal to burrow in mud at the bottom of a pond or you might want your animal to dig a cave in snow. Or you might want to put blubber on your animal like a whale. Or you might want to give your animal a fluffy tail like a squirrel. Or you might want your animal to bathe in hot pools. Oops. Go back, that's it. Or you might want your animal to sleep with another animal to keep warm. Hmm. Or you might want your animal to vibrate their wings like honeybees. Yeah. Or you might want your animal to fly south. Or you might want your animal to tuck its legs under its furry body. Now you're going to make up an an oh back, thanks. Now you're going to create your own animal. This is not an, a real animal. This is something that I just made up, and I gave my animal three adaptations. You can see what they are. I gave it small furry ears like the Arctic fox, and I labeled it. I wrote the words and I pointed to the ears. I gave my animal blubber, like a whale, and I labeled it. I wrote the word, and I pointing, I'm pointing to the blubber. That's those lines. <laughs> and then I gave my animal a long, bushy tail. And again, I labeled it, and I'm pointing to it, just like a squirrel. But I didn't give my animal a name. And I'd like you to give your animal a name. But could you please help me? Think of a name for my animal. Put up your hand if you, you have a name that I could name my animal. Mm. And it's a made up, it, because it's a made up <laughs> animal, it's a made up name. <laughs> tell her, tell her, put up your hand, put up your hand. Put your hand up. Okay, who's that? Um, Aubrey says moose. <laughs> a moose. Well, you know what? That's a real... That's a real name, a real animal. <laughs> Can we change it a little bit, like a musapoos? A musapoos. A musapoos. How about an Arctic 
Snake moose. Oh. <laughs> An Arctic moose. Okay, that's a good idea. Anybody else? I think Lexi and the girls had an idea. Okay. Miracle. Yes, miracle. It's a Pokemon named Fred. You're going to name this animal the miracle animal? Mickey Mouse. <laughs> Mickey Mouse. I'm Mickey Mouse. <laughs> All right. Somebody. I want to change mine. mine. I want to change mine. Okay, go ahead. The Arctic blubber moose. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you for all of your suggestions. Okay, so in a few minutes, you're going to get some paper and some, uh, markers or pencils, whatever you want. You're going to make up your own animal, your own animal. And, has, and you're going to make up a name and with uh, two or three adaptations and Seagal is going to post them on the Beth Tikva website for everybody to see. So just before you go and do that, do you have any questions for me about being a in councils? I have my cousin Pamsel. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any Anybody have any questions about being an author? I do. Yep. I wonder how do you get your ideas for your books, Etta? Where do they come from? From lots of different places. Um, it, it might be something that someone says and that just triggers an idea in my head. Sometimes I'll be reading something and um, from, from the newspaper or from uh, research from a book and that'll just give me a, a different idea. So it comes from lots of different places. That's really neat. Any other questions? Oh, Feldberg's. How many books have you written? Um, I've written lots, but if you're really asking how many have been published, it's about 30. Wow. Wow. Stop. Daddy, I'm making my own stuff. Etta, are you working on a new book now? I'm not making another Actually, uh, um, There are five books that are going to be coming out in the next two years. So I'm um, two of them are totally done and been printed. Uh, three are in the process of being illustrated or uh, edited. Okay. And do you get to choose what kinds of pictures or the type of illustrations you use in your books? Do you have an idea of what you want the pictures to look like? I have lots of ideas and I, I write them down along with my mm -hmm. manuscript, but it's the publisher that chooses the illustrator. Sometimes I love the illustrator like, like do frogs drink hot chocolate? I absolutely adore this illustrator. But sometimes I'm not that happy, but I don't have much choice in it. <laughs> Aubrey wanted to tell you, Aubrey wanted to tell you which adaptation you used. Tell her what you made. I'm gonna make a frog. No, but you have a, would you give it a must? Okay. <laughs> He made a mustache for it. <laughs> well, that, that's a good adaptation. It could keep it, its face warm if it's a big, bushy must, mustache. A mustache, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so he's making up his own adaptations. That's good. That's right. <laughs> Can't you say, before you go, say, say thank you to Etta. Thank you, Etta. You're very welcome. Oh. I'm so glad that you came, Elon. Thank you. You're very Thank welcome. You. So Thank I you. To, you're welcome. I want to see all of your pictures up on the on the Beth Tikva website, okay? Does okay. everybody know how to email me? Mommy and Daddy for well, sure do. Yeah. Okay. Whenever you're ready, don't forget to label your name of your animal that you made that you created. And don't forget to label your adaptations and have mommy and daddy 
Where? Email it to us and we're going to throw it up on the website and we're going to make a special announcement to tell people where to look for your incredible animals. And I just want to say a huge Tadaraba to Etta for reading us her story and for writing this amazing story and for being here today and for all of you who took time out of your busy schedule to join us this morning. I hope that you have a lot of fun drawing pictures and I can't wait to see what you come up with. Okay, I can't wait to see them also. Goodbye everyone. Bye.